legalization of adult use cannabis in the state of Minnesota. I think uh, before we get going, it'd be good to start with introductions. Uh, I am Zach Stevenson. I am the House uh, Chair, Senator Port. I am Senator Lindsay Port. I am the Senate Chair. And why don't we go down the table to my right? Uh, Simon Brown, I'm the Committee Administrator on the House side. Jack Dockendorf, Legislative Assistant, House side. Ben Johnson, House Research. Jess Hansen, House Representative. Representative Kozlowski, um, District 8B in Duluth. I use they, them pronouns. Athena Hollins, House Member. I use she, her pronouns. Courtney Schaff, Committee Legislative Assistant, Senate. Davin Soka, Legislative Assistant, Senate. Laura Pater from the Office of Senate Counsel. Andrew Erickson, Senate Fiscal Analyst. Senator Jordan Rasmussen. Hi, I'm Claire Umuverbait, and I use she, her pronouns, and represent District 66 in the Senate. Thank you, and welcome to all members of the committee. This is the first of what I imagine will be a handful of meetings of this uh, conference. Today, we will be taking up Articles 3, 6, 7, and 8. We'll begin with Article 3. We'll have a motion from Senator Port, followed by discussion and questions to the motion. Senator Port. Uh, I move that we, I move the adoption of Article 3 consistent with the changes detailed in the accompanying sum, summary document. Senator Port moves adoption of Article 3 consistent with the summary document that was posted last evening. Uh, discussion and questions to the motion. Senator Omo Verbet. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to ask a few questions about this. I know um, Article 3 has um, the CAN startup program. And I think from the start, we really wanted this bill to be um, focused on our state, um, focused on small businesses, um, really a clear local focus, supporting micro businesses. Um, and focusing on our communities and, of course, undoing the harm caused by prohibition. So um, just wanted to point out that the CAN Startup Program is really crucial to doing that. And I think members have done a lot of work on the Senate side and House side to, to pull that together. So I'm really looking forward to um, what's included in this article. Representative Hanson. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Senator Umu Verbaten. I think this is a really good question. We've been talking about the need to make sure we focus on supporting small businesses, especially those who have been most harmed by prohibition. So I agree with you. This CAN Startup Program is, is really, really important. Um, so we really want this to be local fo focused. That's why this CAN Startup Program is going to be specifically for micro businesses uh, in this latest change. Um, and, and that means focusing on the communities that have been most harmed. That means focusing on the folks that need the most help, whether it's access to social capital, capital or financial capital, we know that those are the business owners who uh, seek out assistance the most. And so we're happy to build that into this program. Any further discussion to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. Article 3 is adopted, consistent with the changes detailed in the summary document posted last night. Senator Port, do you have a motion? I move the adoption of all of Article 6, other than Sections 1 and 2, consistent with the changes detailed in the accompanying summary document. Senator Port moves adoption of Article 6, other than Sections 1 and 2, consistent with the changes detailed in the summary document posted last <coughs> night. I will note that we do expect adoption of Sections 1 and 2. There is, I think, pretty broad consensus that 1 and 2 should be adopted. We're just still working on some technical language details in Sections one and two, and I would expect adoption of those sections at the next uh, meeting. Those sections are very important. Discussion and questions to the motion. Representative Kozlowski. Thank you, Chair Stevenson. Um, one of the aspects within Article 6 that's, um, I know, really important to me as somebody who is from both the Grand Portage and Fond du Lac Reservation, but as a state legislature, as this body, um, as you all, as the bill authors, has been working with tribes in um, really making sure that there's sovereignty and as well as um, benefits, economic, social justice for the reparations and harm that has happened to black, brown, and indigenous folks. 
um, especially within the tribal nations as we're seeing um, our nations move into medical cannabis and have lots of support um, for our cultural practices and ways within um, this industry as well as within adult use. And I know that I'm really proud of the way that the tribal nations have been engaged throughout this process and curious about um, the next steps within compacting and uh, how we're going to continue to ensure sovereignty and um, you know their self-determination as we move into legalizing cannabis in Minnesota. Yeah, thank you for that question, Representative Kozlowski, and I completely agree uh, that the tribes uh, have a very critical uh, role to play in our new uh, cannabis, uh, legal cannabis marketplace in uh, Minnesota, and that we have been working really hard. A lot of members of both bodies have been working very hard to uh, have meaningful government-to-government -government consultation uh, with the 11 sovereign uh, tribes in Minnesota. Uh, and we're taking it very seriously. We do uh, anticipate that both on the medical and on the adult use side of the bill that when fully implemented, uh, the relationship between uh, cannabis uh, business enterprises uh, uh, operated by tribes and the state of Minnesota will be governed by compacting language. That's a reflection of that government to government relationship between uh, sovereign tribes and the state of Minnesota. Uh, and uh, we're going to keep working on that engagement, uh, and we're going to keep working on that consultation uh, in this bill, and then as we continue to work uh, on cannabis going forward, I think that's a really important uh, principle behind the bill. Any further discussion to the motion? Uh, actually, I have a question, uh, and one of the things that, that I know, Senator Rasmussen, you worked on the, the uh, reports, um, that are in Article 6 and trying to make sure that we had a um, system that works for those reports uh, and was workable for MDH and MDE and others. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the work you did on that and um, what the end, end point was on that. Senator Rasmussen. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, yeah, so I appreciate working with MDH on um, taking some of the language that was in both the Senate and the House bill in regards to cannabis data collection and reporting. Um, and from working with MDH and some of their data survey vendors, I'm confident that the language that uh, we'll agree to on this uh, reporting and data collection will allow us to have a baseline for both the youth population and the adult population for us to track the impacts um, that cannabis legalization and cannabis usage have on folks going forward. And so I appreciate the agencies working to get us to a place where We'll have good data, I think, um, you know, going forward to understand the impacts that this is having on Minnesotans. Thank you, Senator Rasmussen. Thanks for your, your work on that section. I, I'm, I think it's important, and I'm glad that we reached a workable uh, solution uh, to the problem. Further discussion and questions to the motion? Senator Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I know in Article 6, um, we talk about you know drug testing at work and reasonable suspicion, and I know we had some conversations on um, what that means for employers and employees, and I was wondering if we could maybe talk a little bit about that today and um, for the committee, because I think that's a really important piece as to making sure that we're ensuring workplace safety um, while also protecting workers. Representative Hollins. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, Senator Rasmussen. I think that's a fantastic question. And I think it's something that we really contemplated deeply when we were working on this language in the House. Um, and I assume you all did in the Senate as well. But I think um, the House language really reflects um, the fact that we know that we need to have safe workplaces. We know that we want to make sure that people are um, feeling safe and secure when they're doing their work, but we're treating this a lot like alcohol, which is to say, um, you know, there's still protections for employers around ensuring that safe workplace, um, making sure that people are allowed to use recreationally, but not allowed to use while they're at work. Um, because we recognize that although everybody's job is different, um, there are, there are needs, uh, for clear-headedness in the work that we do. And so we just want to make sure that just like alcohol, um, adult use cannabis is something that you can do in your off time, but not something that um, we're expecting folks to do while they're at work. Representative Hanson. Thank you, Chair. Um, I have a question regarding some of the youth education. We've heard a lot about that throughout 
floor debates and in conversations with public health and a number of other folks. So I just wanted to, to have a chance to talk a little bit about why, why is peer-to-peer -peer important? What is the importance of making sure we're doing good education, that giving folks information about how to uh, use safely and how to help kids if they need it? And if we could just talk a little bit about that. Senator Port. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Representative Hansen, for this question. This is a part that I've worked a lot on and I'm really proud of. Um, the youth education piece of this, talking with other states and looking at what, what has been successful around the country, we know the most successful uh, sort of education system for youth is peer-to-peer -peer education. Um, and so the reason uh, we know that and why other states tried it is because Minnesota had a very successful program a decade ago uh, when we did target market to reduce teen smoking. Um, it was an incredibly successful program and states all across the country have used that same model. Uh, and it's been very effective as well uh, with youth outreach on cannabis. So we, we put that same idea into the bill by doing peer-to-peer -peer education. Um, with this uh, summary that we're adopting today, we did increase um, sort of the target age of that up to 25 because we know that brains continue developing up until then um, and that we wanted to make sure that that really effective form of education was getting to young people all the way up to 25. Any further discussion to the port motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. And Article 6, other than Sections 1 and 2, are adopted consistent with the changes detailed in the summary document that was posted last night. Senator Port, do you have a motion? I move the adoption of the A122 amendment. Senator Port moves adoption of the A122 amendment. And this amendment, I believe, relates to the definition of marijuana, bringing it into sync with other portions of the bill. Is there any discussion to the A122 amendment? Senator Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was wondering if I could get a copy of the amendment. I have my copy. We'll pause for a second so Senator Rasmussen can lay eyes on it. And thank you, Mr. Chair. would wonder if, if you could maybe explain some of the thinking or the conversations that led to this amendment. I'm going to turn to Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Chair, members, this is essentially a technical amendment that brings the existing definition of the term marijuana into consistency with the new terms that would be adopted in the full bill. At the current moment, the definition of marijuana refers to a variety of portions of the cannabis plant and then has a list of exceptions to that plant. The new definitions that would be adopted in Article 1, assuming those are adopted, subdivide some of these portions of the plant into other categories based on how they are typically used in the industry. So it talks about plants, talks about flour, concentrate, products, and seed. So the language that you see that's stricken is general language about plant parts, and that is replaced now with more descriptive uh, definitions of those particular plant parts. The other portions that are in the amendment are not changing current law. They are simply restructuring current law. You'll see on page two that there's some language that is stricken that goes from line 2.1 through line 2.3. But if you look, that language is actually identical to what's been moved up to clause three at the bottom of page one. So it's really a technical restructuring to make this definition consistent with the other terms that would be adopted in the full bill. Senator Rasmussen. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails and the A122 amendment is adopted. Senator Port, do you have a motion? Yes, Mr. Chair, I move the adoption of the A30 amendment, which is the uh, rewrite of the Article 7 temporary regs. Senator Port moves the A30 amendment, which uh, would be adoption of Article 7 temporary regs as rewritten. And Senator Port, I believe you have an oral amendment to that motion. I do. Uh, if I could pass it to Mr. Johnson for the oral amendment, please. Mr. Johnson, if you could state the oral amendment. 
Uh, Mr. Chair and members, the oral amendment will be on page six. I'll give you a minute to flip to page six. The oral amendment would be as follows. Page six, line 27, strike and which contains no more than a page six, line 28, delete the new language. As a result of those changes, the final sentence that is in that paragraph would read, the requirement that packaging be child resistant does not apply to an edible cannabinoid product that is intended to be consumed as a beverage, period. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. And the purpose, members, the purpose behind uh, this oral amendment is to bring Article 7 into harmony with what we expect Article 1 to uh, say with regard to childproof packaging for uh, beverages, the low dose THC infused beverages. Uh, that's what this relates to. But just generally speaking, we're not expecting childproof packaging for that, just like cans of beer don't have childproof uh, packaging. Any discussion to the oral amendment? Senator Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just wanted to ask a little bit of a process you know, question. Was, was this amendment posted online, or it was posted online? Senator Rasmussen, the A30 amendment was posted uh, last night. Uh, the oral amendment was not posted. It is oral. Thank you. No. Further discussion to the oral amendment? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails, and the oral amendment is adopted. Discussion to the A30 amendment. Um, I will start by saying that one significant difference that's not just in Article uh, 7 is uh, the distinction between the term artificial and synthetic. Uh, the House throughout the bill, not just in Article 7, but throughout used the term artificial. The Senate used the firm, uh, term synthetic. The decision after consulting with uh, stakeholders and um, experts in the field was to go with artificial. And so actually, if you kind of totaled all the differences between the House and Senate bill, this would be by far the most uh, common. It is mostly a technical uh, uh, a difference. But throughout the bill, we are going with artificial. Uh, further discussion, Representative West. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I know not all stakeholders are particularly pleased with this definition, and it would have been vastly better for the public and the bill at large, I'd say, would it be have the definition conversation in public where all members can see what, what's being determined and the public can know what's being put forward. Uh, I think the intention, especially since we legalized the hemp market in the last session, would be what they have, what they're offering now that's safe uh, should continue to be legal, whereas I've heard there are some issues in regards to that with this definition. Is, is it your intention that this bill would have what we legalized last session to continue to be legalized? Representative West, uh, first of all, I would just note <clears throat> in terms of uh, public participation, not only are we obviously having a hearing in public today where we can discuss uh, artificial versus synthetic to everyone's heart's content um, and, and, and do that in the in public eye and have a vote on it in the public eye. Uh, but this bill uh, in the House uh, had 16 public hearings. Um, Senator Port, I don't know how many in public hearings in the Senate, 15. So 31 public hearings across two chambers in one year, not to mention all the hearings last year. So I think that the public has had ample opportunity uh, to weigh in on this bill, and we can certainly discuss artificial and synthetic uh, today. Uh, the intent of uh, Article 7, the temporary regulations, is um, I think to allow the uh, marketplace that has emerged around low dose uh, products to continue with new guardrails, guardrails that I think some wish had been in place from the very beginning. Uh, and we are, are, are putting those uh, up now while allowing the marketplace to continue with an eye towards the transition that's going to happen uh, as the adult use market uh, goes live. Representative West. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, so 
uh, you mentioned that this is aligning it well with what the definitions are expected to be in Article 1. Do we have a timeline on when Article 1 will be brought up? And say there is an issue that's discovered, can we revisit this if you want to revisit Article 1 definitions? As to the first question, uh, the House passed a resolution uh, two days ago, I believe, indicating that the session would end on May 18th. Uh, so I would certainly expect Article 1 to come up well in advance of, of, of that day. Um, and the sooner, the better. We have obviously a lot of work to do, and we're working expeditiously to get it done. Uh, as to the second question, a conference report is not closed until uh, there are signatures on the page. Further discussion to the port motion. Representative Hansen. Thank you, Chair. I just wanted to ask a quick question about serving sizes for edibles and for drinkables. Um, just want to make sure that we uh, have a conversation about that. I know we have some goals to keep things consistent, but just wanted to expand on that a little bit if we could. Senator Port. Uh, thank you, Representative Hansen. Our, our goal with this was to uh, both differentiate between the low-dose market and what will be the adult use market, um, and also to maintain consistency with the regulations that were passed last year. So um, the low-dose market will stay at five milligrams. Um, for beverages, they will be allowed two servings per beverage. Um, and you'll see sort of that um, expanded as we get to Article 1, uh, a similar sort of ratio uh, for the adult use. Any further discussion to the port motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails. And the A30 amendment is adopted as modified by the oral amendment, is adopted. Senator Port, do you have a motion? Uh, yes, Chair Stevenson, I move the adoption of Article 8, House Sections 1 and 2. Senator Port moves adoption of Article 8, House Sections 1 and 2. Members, the only distinction between the House and Senate language in this article was that artificial synthetic conversation we had just a minute ago. This relates to the scheduling uh, of substances. Any discussion to the port motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails and Article 8, House Sections 1 and 2 are adopted. Senator Port. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that nonpartisan staff be authorized to make any technical corrections to reflect the will of the committee. Senator Port moves that nonpartisan staff be authorized to make technical corrections. Any discussion to the motion? Seeing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion prevails, and nonpartisan staff are authorized to make any technical corrections to reflect the will of the committee. Uh, this, Senator Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I was just wondering if you and Senator Port can maybe talk about the plan you know, over the next 10 days and, and how you see the work of this conference committee proceeding. Uh, Senator Rasmussen, uh, I uh, thank you for the question. I think that we will work expeditiously to close additional articles uh, in this uh, committee in the in the coming days. We don't have a specific plan for when our next meeting is at this moment, but as I mentioned a minute ago when uh, in response to Representative West's question, uh, we are certainly well aware of the constitutional deadline that's approaching as well as uh, the House's desire to be done on the 18th, and so I expect uh, Quick action, Senator Port. Uh, Mr. Chair, I will just uh, add uh, to that that we are not our own committee, uh, which means we are sharing nonpartisan staff. And I want to thank nonpartisan staff and research who has worked incredibly hard while also balancing uh, the omnibus bills that they are working on. And that is you know, part of our calculation of when we have staff support to be able to move forward. Senator Rasmussen. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate that. And this this is a <clears throat> highly complicated bill, and I, I think um, you know even much more complicated than an omnibus bill, where you're going through and making decisions on individual bills or budget items because of the how interconnected certain articles provisions are to other articles and provisions. And one thing I just wanted to you know point out for the conference committee's awareness is that uh, this conference committee actually doesn't need to end our work. Uh, when the legislature adjourns this year. Um, if we're at the point 
where there's still details that need to be worked out. Um, this conference committee can remain open in the interim and actually submit our report uh, to be taken up uh, next year, uh, next session. And I just want to make sure, given the importance that this bill has for Minnesotans uh, and the dramatic impact it's going to have on their lives, that we get it right and we don't rush it. Um, and so I just want the committee to know that that's an option that's available uh, to us and has been done in the past. Thank you, Senator Rasmussen, and appreciate uh, that point, but strongly disagree with the idea that we would not finish this bill uh, this year. Uh, it is my expectation, intention, desire uh, that this bill uh, will be on the governor's desk before the end of this legislative uh, session, and, uh, and I expect to deliver on that uh, uh, promise. We had uh, just today a poll released by KSTP showing 64% of Minnesotans want cannabis uh, to be legalized. Minnesotans are ready for this change. Our laws are doing more harm than good, and every day we leave them in place, more harm is done. Uh, so we are gonna deliver this bill for the people of Minnesota this year. Any further discussion? <laughs> Seeing none, we've reached the end of our agenda and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>